Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be going over material property overrides for Unity's hybrid renderer. Now of course the hybrid renderer is what we use when we're using Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. And these material property overrides give us kind of some nice flexibility that we can use to basically override properties of a material, you know, as the name kind of suggests, which allows us to do a couple things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do without using these. So now if you're familiar with Unity ECS, you'll know that the materials are actually a shared component. So that means if you want to change the material of an entity, then that's going to trigger a structural change, which gets into all kinds of crazy things like sync points, and it really just hurts the performance of your game. Furthermore, we're not allowed to basically just do something as simple as changing the color on an entity without triggering one of these sync points because we have to you know, change the material on it. However, these material property overrides basically give us a way to, you know, override a specific property of our material. For example, the color or the smoothness or again, some other properties about the material. So it basically allows us to modify and override these within parallel jobs so that we can do, you know, simple common operations such as changing the color or some other visual properties of an entity without triggering a sync point. Now, in order to follow along this video, your project does need to be running the hybrid render version two. I did just put up a video a few days ago about how to actually upgrade your project to hybrid render V2. So go check that out if you haven't already so you can follow along with this video. Now your project can either be using the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline, URP and HDRP. In this example, I'm using URP because that's typically what I use. All right, so now we'll jump over to Unity and it's kind of cool that Unity actually provides us some of these material property overrides by default. Most often, this is just gonna be exactly what we need for our project. However, we can make our own custom ones and I will be showing you how to do that later on in this video. But basically, if we just go down to the packages directory, we're looking for the hybrid renderer and then unity.rendering.hybrid, go ahead and expand that out. And then you'll see that we have uh, the HDRP material properties as well as the URP material properties. So depending on which render pipeline you're using, you're gonna go ahead and select one or the other. Of course, because HDRP has much more options, they have much more overrides that we can um, deal with, but basically they work exactly the same. So we'll just go over to the URP material properties. You'll see that we have a number of these to choose from. So example, we have, so we have base color, bump scale, cutoff, emission color, metallic, occlusion strength, smoothness, and spec color. So we're just gonna be dealing with the base color. I'm just gonna be showing you how to change the color because that's the you know easiest one to visually see, but these all work basically exactly the same. So I'll just go ahead and select all these cubes that I have on the grid, and then we can just drop one of these base color components on here. So now you'll see that it kind of gives us some options that we can put by default. Um, because this is a float four under the hood, it's giving us um, options to set for X, Y, Z, and W. Uh, but this basically just translates to R, G, B, and A. So for example, if we wanted to say, uh, you know, set the Y value, which is essentially the green value to a value of one, and the W, which is the A value, we'll set that to a value of one as well. You'll see that when I enter play mode, now the color is just gonna change from the default color that I've set for the material into the overrided color that I've set right here, which of course is green. So nice and simple. We can literally just select any color that we want just uh, manually like that. Now, however, this is really cool because we can actually query for this basically as a component. So you'll see that I'm doing a ref for the URP material property base color, which I've just called base color. And then here we can just set the base color dot value equal to a new random color. Check out the video that I did on using random in Unity ECS if you wanna see how I did this random setup here. But now when we enter play mode, you'll see that it basically just assigns a random color to each one of these cubes here. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom material property overrides if for some reason just the built-in default ones are not enough for you. So now we're actually gonna be doing this with shader graph and through shader graph, we're going to expose one of these properties and then from there, we can actually create one of these little data components that kind of match the name of the property that we're exposing in shader graph. 
And that way we can actually, you know, configure this property and override it. All right, so first we'll just go to create and then shader, and then we'll go to universal render pipeline because we are using URP. And then I'm just gonna be doing an unlit shader graph. You can of course do whatever kind of shader graph that you like, just give it any name that you like here. And then we'll go ahead and actually open it up within shader graph. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is expose our color property. So we can just go ahead and hit the plus icon up here and we'll select color. That's going to ask us to give us a name for the color. So for fun, we'll just call this the turbo color. Um, just so I can kind of show you off some important things here. And then I set the name and reference to the same thing here. So for default, we can just go ahead and set this to a nice bright yellow, just so we know when it's at the default mode is default precision is inherit. That's just fine. Of course, we want this exposed. So we'll make sure that is checked. Now important, we do need to check mark the override property declaration in here. And then under per material, we're just gonna go ahead, uh, go to the drop down, and we'll say hybrid per instance. So it's important that we set that exactly like that. So now once that's all set, we can just go ahead and bring our property down into the window here. Um, and then we'll just drag from this little node here for turbo color onto the base color for the fragments. Then you'll see that the main preview updates to now have that bright yellow color. So make sure to save the asset in the upper left here. And then now this is the point where you would actually go to maybe create your own uh, material off of your shader graph. You can just do a right click and go to create and material and that will automatically create it. Uh, but for me, I'm actually just going to use the existing material that I have. So everything updates. So we'll change this to the color changing shader on here. And you'll see that all the cubes in the scene have now updated to this bright yellow color. And then of course, if we enter play mode, we're actually not doing anything to override the assets at this point. So you'll see that once we enter play mode, they're just gonna stay this bright yellow color. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is come over to our code editor. Um, and then here we're just gonna create a pretty simple data component. You'll see that it's just you know a regular struct uh, which in this case I've called it color override, of course, implementing I component data. Now you'll notice that um, in addition to the standard generate authoring component uh, attribute, which we normally have, we also have this other attribute, which is material property. And then we pass in the name of the property. Now this needs to be exactly the same as the name that we have exposed over in shader graph. So you'll remember that I called it turbo color. So we're looking for uh, the turbo color here. And then here's where we basically just set basically the kind of data type that it is so we'll say material property dot format dot float for and of course there's um, you know different types for all the other material property formats that it could be and then you'll see that um, our actual value is a public float for here so now instead of using the built-in unity color property we are actually going to use our own so we can actually just go ahead and remove these components and we'll just go ahead and add my color override authoring script on here now again you'll see that we can put in whatever value we want on here but you see what I'm doing here is I'm actually overriding this on update again you know we're doing a very similar thing to before we're looking for anything with the ref color override on here and then here we're just setting that float for value uh, just using this calculate color function that I've created here and you'll notice that my entities dot for each function we're doing a dot schedule parallel so we're basically you know calculating an individual color for all of these different entities and then we're setting its own unique color on all these on different parallel worker threads so we'll come back to unity of course, enter play mode, and then you'll see that we have these nice, beautiful sweeping colors just going across the whole grid right here. And you know, this looks all well and good until you realize what is really going on. So check this out. We have a ton of these, a couple thousand I think are right here, um, just doing this whole beautiful little kind of color display. I think this is just such a fun thing to um, you know just look at. It's a really cool thing. And then of course we can get really crazy with it and just have this like massive cube of cubes here. Uh, you'll see, I think there are over 65,000 cubes. Um, just again, all calculating their own individual colors and assigning them all on parallel worker threads. This is still running at a pretty good frame right here. So again, you can kind of see, you know, if you're doing these kinds of things where uh, you need to be modifying any properties of these material, especially on parallel threads, you know, this is exactly what you need to be looking at. All right, so anyways, that is basically gonna wrap up this video. That's basically getting an overview about how to use these material property overrides for Unity's universal render pipeline, which is what you use with Unity's entity component system, which is part of their data-oriented technology stack. Did you get all that? Are you taking notes? 
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you hit this like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.